In September of 2019, we told you about an interesting project that placed floating gardens in the Chicago River. At the time, nobody knew what effect this would have on the fish population. But now, there are some encouraging findings, so we bring you this update. Throughout the world, most cities have gone through a process of widening, straightening, dredging their rivers to create this sort of shipping system. And, you know, the process of that was at the detriment to the wildlife that was originally there. So one of the real big missions of this is to create a model for how you would build an ecosystem in a river within a densely populated urban area. Nick Wesley is one of the co-founders of Urban Rivers, the group that is working to create Wild Mile, a mile-long floating eco-park within the Chicago River. Urban waterways have had a lot of different abuse over the years. The Chicago River, for one, was reversed, basically to move sewage instead of in Lake Michigan to other areas down south and in the Gulf of Mexico. And so with this history and this legacy of pollution and mistreatment, the Wild Mile kind of creates this new space where the focus is the habitat, the wildlife, the health of the river in general. One of the most innovative features of the Wild Mile is a series of floating garden islands. So I'm on the floating garden that we just installed, and you can see a lot of these plants, which were planted about two weeks ago, are really just starting to come in. We use these floating garden modules to do a few things. One is to create habitat for the areas around that, and it does it by having plants that grow directly through the system and having the roots freely suspended within the river. It creates habitat for fish and other wildlife. It also creates a space for birds and insects to kind of congregate, really create this ecosystem within it. The first islands were installed in 2017. That year, 60 floating gardens were put in place. This summer, an additional 170 were added along the river. The Wild Mile is intended to both strengthen the community's connection to the river and host scientific research into the river's ecology. The goal is to create an environment for habitat as well as new opportunities for recreation and education. Welcome to Kayak for Conservation. Shed Aquarium has been getting people in the community involved in river restoration through a program called Kayak for Conservation. Volunteers have been collecting data along the river since 2018. Jackie Midoff is the manager of conservation stewardship for the Shed Aquarium. The kayak program is meant to get out people out here on the Chicago River and experience it firsthand. We have different types of programs to meet people at their comfort levels. So sometimes that's just a tour where they're coming out and learning, and other times that's coming out and getting their hands dirty and giving back to the river. So that could be anything from litter monitoring to wildlife monitoring, anything from fish to waterfowl to turtles and that helps give us a baseline for where wildlife is in the canal and how they're using the space as we continue to build out the canal with islands. Yeah, if we get a little farther down, there's definitely turtles. The connection to the river is so important because in order to continue improving the Chicago River, we need people who care for it. And in order to have people who care for it, they need to have a relationship with it in the first place. The most rewarding part of this program for me is seeing the change in people and their feelings about the Chicago River uh, from before and after being out on the river. So a lot of times people come and they have not so good opinions about the Chicago River and they leave and are just amazed at the things that they saw out there. Data collected by volunteers is helping scientists like Austin Happel, a research biologist with Chicago's Shedd Aquarium, who is working to identify the impact the islands have on the river's fish population. So in a lot of urban areas, rivers have been channelized, which means the sides of them have been dug straight down and the bottom of the river has been kind of scoured flat. And when that happens, there's no habitat for fish. Fish love structure and love hiding around things. They'll usually spawn on structures. But when rivers are channelized like that, there's nothing really there for them. These artificial floating wetlands kind of add additional aspects to those in that they're 
uh, roots that are hanging down from the surface of the water. And so roots can um, suck up nutrients, they can help with adding oxygen to the waterway, they can allow invertebrates to live within the roots, and then fish can hide not only amongst them, but around them and spawn within those roots. Much of Austin's research is done at night. He collects fish and data to try and determine if fish are using the floating islands. One thing I'm really interested in is if fish are using them as spawning habitat. So throughout the summer, I go out there and place larval light traps, which are a means of collecting larval fish, which are baby fish that aren't great at swimming quite yet, but they seem to be attracted into these light traps. And then we can use that to assess our fish spawning near these islands more than they are other structures or other parts of the river. Back at Shed Aquarium, Austin analyzes the larval fish he collected on the islands. Over here we have a fish caught in late August, um, set up in our microscope um, so that we can look at it and try to identify what it is. We also have a scale under the microscope and that scale is used to get measurements of how big that fish is. Austin discovered that a variety of native species were using the floating habitats and many more species than he expected were calling the islands home. These are some species that we identified using both the camera and using genetic ID. Species I expected to find were the common carp and the goldfish and the fathead minnow. Ones I was kind of surprised at finding were things like this white sucker um, and these golden shiner and spot fin shiners. Um, these are native species and it's really cool to see them in that part of the river. I was hoping to find anything at these islands, and so it was really great to be able to find 10 species, um, 10 species spawning in that area, and a lot of them being native species. Um, so that was really exciting to see. Austin's research could indicate that more islands in the river may mean more fish. This year, they're even adding more islands, so they're expanding the surface area that these wetlands um, take up. And so hopefully that means even more space for fish to hang out under and spawn on. And I'm interested in trying to see if we start seeing more and more of that happening. The river is changing from its you know, primary need being a waste dispersion method to actually being something of a ecological asset for the people around it. So I think we're getting close to the day where people will assume that a river has always been this ecological bounty within their city instead of what it is now where it's kind of an afterthought. And it, you know, that future I think is soon. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.